I'm Barbara Rimkunis, and this is your Exeter History Minute. I'm coming to you today from Phoenix, Arizona, to talk about Exeter's Hunnaman fire engines. First, a little background. Fire was always a problem in colonial America. The houses were made of wood. Often they had wood shingled roofs. In the center of towns, which in Exeter was called the village, the houses were and barns were really close together, so it was possible for a fire to spread very quickly. The earliest fire regulation we have in the town of Exeter is from 1639, when it was made illegal to clear land using fire. In 1771, each household in town had to have two fire buckets and a ladder tall enough to reach the top floor of the house. Fire buckets were made out of leather, and they couldn't be used for any other purpose. No hauling wash water, no feeding the chickens. They were usually kept close to the doorway. Check the Lad Gilman House at the American Independence Museum for their fire buckets. Three years later, in 1774, the town purchased its first fire engine for 50 pounds. Now, don't think of this as a real fire truck. A uh, fire engine was really a portable water pump, and the early ones were rectangular tubs, which were called hand tubs, so all these early ones are called hand tubs. These were carried to the scene of the fire, and once they were there, the tub part had to be filled with water, usually by a bucket brigade of people lined up. It could be men, women, children. Any able-bodied person in town would be part of the bucket brigade. The water was then sprayed through a nozzle close to the fire because the goal wasn't really to put out the fire. The goal was really to keep the fire from spreading to other buildings. There was a whole other group of people that would go into the burning building and try to salvage anything that was in there by throwing it out the windows. Fire engine design improved over time. The tub became a tub that had wheels on it, although it was still humans that had to bring it to the scene. After the revolution, William Hunneman of Boston, who apprenticed in the Paul Revere foundry as a copper and brass smith, opened his Hunneman Company, which produced fire engines from 1792 until 1883. Exeter bought the first of its three Hunneman fire engines in 1836. It was customary to give your fire engine a name, Back then, this one was called the Piscataqua. Although the pumping technology was greatly improved from the earlier designs, the engine still could not draw water in, so the bucket brigade was still necessary for the Piscataqua. In 1852, Exeter brought the newer design that could draw water in, hooray! Of course, they still used both engines at a fire scene, so bucket brigade was still there to fill up the Piscataqua. They also had to have the engine very close to a water source to pull the water. In 1869, the town purchased its third Hunnaman, actually a bit of a hybrid because it was made by another company in 1846, used in another town, and then retooled by the Hunnaman Company and sold to Exeter. All of these old hand tubs were pulled to the scene by the firefighters. Keep that in mind, there's no fire horses at this time period. The Piscataqua never left Exeter, even after it was deemed to be nearly useless. And the last, one of the last times it was used, they actually hauled the entire thing and sunk it in the river and pumped it from there to get the water out so they wouldn't need the bucket brigade. Anyway, after that, it was stored for a long time in a barn off of Portsmouth Avenue until some nostalgic firefighters decided to fix it up and use it at firemen's musters. The retooled fountain engine was originally owned by the town of Fall River, Massachusetts, remember, and then it gets sent back to Hunnaman, where it was called the Atlantic. Um, in Exeter, it was called the fountain, but now that it's been restored and is in, the, in Exeter again, it's called the Atlantic again. Both of these can be seen in the Exeter Fire Museum. Which brings us to Arizona. <laughs> the old Union fire engine has traveled a lot. Um, it was sold to Walpole, Matt, New Hampshire, after it was used in Exeter, and then it became a collector's piece, and it goes from one collector and one antiques dealer to another. It goes to Manchester, New Hampshire, and then Florida, and then Tennessee, before finding its permanent home here in Phoenix at the Hall of Flame Fire Museum, which is the greatest name for a fire museum ever. It's been beautifully restored again recently. This museum has over an acre of fire history exhibits with over 900 fully restored pieces of fire apparatus. The museum is amazing, and some of those of us from Exeter can be extremely proud that one of our fire engines is featured right here. Many thanks to the wonderful people of the Hall of Flame for allowing us to film. I took this trip with my husband, Mike, who is, seen, uh, who is actually running the camera today because we couldn't bring Laura Martin with us, but don't worry, she's going to do all the post-production work to make this footage work. Today's Exeter History Minute is sponsored by the Foy Insurance Company. Make sure you buy your fire insurance. I'm just giving Laura some... Uh... Yeah, you got to give her a lot of stills. <laughs> well, I'm not giving her stills. I'm actually giving her some uh, B-roll.